I'm Rebecca. And I'm Hunter. This, this is the Family Show! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to my top 100 games of all time. I'm Rebecca. This is Hunter. And today we're going to go over my 10 through 1. Woohoo! We have arrived! So, <laughs> you, you think you know. I know. I know the 10. He doesn't know what order they are. I have no clue what order they're like, in. He's like deduced which, what they are. Because, I mean, obviously. And I will say this there is one absolute surprise. I can't wait to hear the reasoning behind it. I like it a lot. I'll tell you the reason behind whatever it is. There you go. <laughs> so, my top ten has two that are new to my list. That's pretty significant. But once you see what those two are, you'll probably be like, ah, because if you've watched any of my other videos, you're going to know. You're just going to know. Because you just you just gonna know. You're gonna know. Because I talk about these games a lot. So I'm excited. Are you? I'm very excited. I, I almost wish I could pan over and show you the, the beast of a pile of games I have for this. <laughs> these are my heavy hitters, man. Um, I can I, pan over. I, I have I put our little piano bench over here off to the side and I stack up the games and then put a blanket over just to surprise Hunter so he can't see what games I'm going to talk about. And the pile is almost my height right now. <laughs> it's pretty There's amazing. Poor, the poor game on the bottom of that stack is weeping. <laughs> but not for long, because we're about to reveal. Are you right. ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. My number 10 is one of the ones that is new to the list, and that's because we simply had not played it yet. And that was the gloriousness that is... Star Trek Ascendancy. No one is going to be surprised by this if you've probably heard us talking about this game on other things. But for those of you that haven't, Star Trek Ascendancy is one of those Star Trek worlds in a box sort of game. Um, what's neat about this one in particular is that you get to play all the different races. Well, not all of them, obviously, but uh, the big ones. Then you are building the galaxy as you go. And depending on how you roll and building up your, your warp, you have different lengths and you can move the planets around until they're attached from two different sides, uh, from warps and things. So your galaxy is the table. I, it's amazing. It's By the time you've finished a game, your planets are all over the place. And it's just, it's a great web of <laughs> warp zones and planets. It's really cool. The... Game, you have, you know, the Federation and the Klingons and all this. They've got expansions for the Borg and the Cardassians and Romulans. It's fantastic. Every one of them has a unique ability that very much plays into their character in the Star Trek universe, which I think is really fun. Um, for example, Starfleet, which is currently my favorite one to play, is the one that doesn't openly go into battle and you need to negotiate a little more and you're all about the exploration and the science end of it and militarily like defensive more than just offensive really and then Klingons they're just built to gear up and go conquer things right off the bat I just there's oh, so much great goody happy Star Trekness. if you like Star Trek I think you'll really get into this game the whole point of it you're going around trying to get five ascendancy which is the victory points for the game you're, when you colonize a world, you can build, I guess you'd say, factories? Is that really what you, I guess you'd say, factories on them? Um, production. Pro yeah, you've got production and culture and different things that give you these tokens that you can use to build up and spend for different nodes. sundry items. Yes, nodes. And, oh, it's just great. The minis for the game are really neat and they have like a little pedestal you put the ship on if you have a fleet of ships so you don't have to put 20 little ships in one spot you put them on a card and then you put the representative of the fleet on the board and move it around just really neat 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 game i 
love this. It's not so much about individual characters in this game, like, say, Fleet Captains, where you're looking at the different... You know, you could build a crew with, say, people from original series and next gen and all this stuff. This one doesn't really go into that. It's more about what each race does and what their abilities are and how they're exploring and interacting with the galaxy. So, very, very fun. I love it. It's my number 10. And that's Star Trek Ascendancy. Yeah, the, the, I like the fact, well, like you said, the Fleet Captains is more episodic and character driven and things like that. This one's kind of like you pull back a little bit and you're kind of looking at the space battles and conquering planets and yeah. negotiations and things like that. So, yeah, I really enjoy this one. This one's a good one. It's my number 12, so I'm right there with you. Um, I've played every race now, but the Klingons, I've liked them all. They're all very unique. They're all very, you have to play them differently. If yes. you try to if you try to shoehorn one, one race's play method into a different one, it's not going to work for you. You have to really adapt to how they play, yes. um, which is very thematic. And uh, just a really great overall game. It's, it's um, kind of a 4X game. You're kind yes. of exploring your... You're creating resources, you're doing the trading and negotiation, you're doing the space battles, the whole whole nine yards. So, yep. Yes, and it does require three players to play, so it doesn't hit the table as often as we would like, of course, but it's totally worth it when it does. They estimate about an hour per player, and that's probably a little short. If, I think if you've got experience with playing this and you know what you're doing, that's relevant if not you're probably looking at more more time more than that so yeah I, at this point because we've been playing different races and trying new things so it's still a little slower play for us but yeah we always, I think we always try something different something new but i think once we go back to playing familiar races and stuff it'll pick up a little bit so yep. it's a pretty good one but again you can see ooh, one of the reasons that it's a heavy hitter right there that's a big <laughs> box my number 10 all right my number nine was my number five last year. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm just okay. trying to see the wheels turning. Okay. What's funny is I always, when I go to look for this box on the shelf, I always think of this as being a huge box. And then when I go to find it, I'm like, it's not all that big. Why I think that is because this is one of the heavier, heaviest games that we own through the ages. A new story of civilization. And... Yes, this box is pretty small for the monster of a game that it packs in it. You are playing Civilization, the board game. It's like playing that old Sid Meier Civilization computer game way back in the day, and I think that's where the appeal for this goes, because I loved that game and I played it to death in its many variations. And now, to have a board game format for that is just wonderful. You've got the cycling of, like, things go each turn and they shift down and you've got some cards that you can draft and slowly the, those are going to get eliminated either people purchase them or they just fall off the edge and they're going to get more modern and more modern you start out in ancient times you know you've got aristotle and people like that for leaders and you end up with napoleon later and then next thing you know it's all the way up and you've got einstein and different things and so that's just the leaders and then you've got buildings and you get to upgrade those and you get to you have to keep your people happy and you have to balance the happiness with the population with the type of government that you have and the amount of food and buildings and production that you have to be able to build these things so every turn you've got to balance the whole your civilization and keep it on an even keel but still be able to gain momentum and beat your opponent of course and there's military you've got to keep track of and there's different military tactics that you can do and you can upgrade your military to different things you can colonize. They've got a thing where you kind of bid military people for getting colonies and they have different benefits for doing that. And there's so much going on in this game that the first time we played it, it kind of melts your brain. <laughs> you know? But after that, it's, it's a good melting though. You're really, you have all these different things to think about and which way do I want to go? Do I want to go like the wonders route and try to do like world wonders and things like that and get victory points that way or with specific buildings or do you want to go the military route and take over that way and there's many different choices but to some degree you have to keep your civilization in check and in balance each time so yeah this one is an awesome game this is one of my 
favorite, favorite games. It is a bear to learn. It is a bear to teach. It's There is a lot yeah. going on. I almost call this one logistics the board game because... <laughs> it really is. It, it there's has a so lot, much There's a to lot it. of stages to, 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 to a turn. I mean, there's... You have the political phase where you draft a card or you can play a card for the future, and then there's all this, all the drafting of the Balancing, cards and yes, playing of all that, the cards, yeah. and then after that's done, then you got to kind of churn your engine and you produce and you got to feed your people and do all that. Then there's the cleanup phase, and on it's on to the next person's turn. It's 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 a lot to take in. It is really yeah. really tough, to, but it is very rewarding if you do learn it and you do play it. It is an awesome game if you like if you like uh engine building games you like card drafting games you like the, the like she said the civ type computer games this is basically like she said civilization the board game but they take the map away yeah and so it's more it focuses in on more of the upgrades and the technologies and, and development right that more yeah. so than expanding out and exploring a map so to speak so um, it really kind of focuses in on that area, and if you like that part of the game and really building up it. and creating that engine, this is this is the game. So anyway, it's my number three. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite games. Um, it can get long. I mean, even the two-player game, if which you're is talking, our go-to number. <laughs> if there's a two, even a two-player game, you're talking three hours if you know what you're doing, and and I think you can get it down from that. But we play this one. And frequently enough where like, it's, oh, it's, sti it's little, sticking yeah. in at about a three hour game for us um you probably can get it down to two if you played it often with with someone else and you're familiar with and you can and you keep moving right because you yeah. can really can kind of bog down in, in the, your thought processes in this because there's like they said there's so much to take on true but you get up to three and four players i've i've played i've never played it with that i have many. no desire to do it, honestly it, I, this it, is a two-player game as far as i'm concerned it, it is it, i <laughs> so. cannot imagine a, a four-player game of this would have to be five plus hours unless you like i said unless you really play it frequently with really. the same people yep but no it is an awesome game it is one of my Favorite, favorite, favorite games. Well, and nowadays, the nice thing is you could probably go online and find a, like, watch it played or some other, like, how-to video that would walk you through this, too, so you're not, like, we were pouring over a rule book yeah. for who knows how long you did that, you know? It has two rule books. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, there's that, or if you're a really good reader, hey, you can do it. It can be done. But, yes, there's many options. Really, really awesome game. Love it. It's my number nine. All right, my number eight is the last new game to this. And the funny thing is, we have a newer version of it, but we've already gotten rid of our older version. <laughs> but it's new to the list. So you probably already know what it is. <laughs> it's another one that just is a heavy beast of a box, and that is... Twilight Imperium 3. This is Twilight Imperium 4. See, look at this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's smaller than the old box. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a little thicker, though. A little thicker. But this game, you probably are starting to see a theme here. Um, I have a thing about vast civilizations and civilization building in space. Yeah, that's, that's probably my weakness right there. This one is definitely no exception. Why do we have the fourth one? Well, the third one was amazing, and they came out with this one, fourth edition, that has streamlined some of it and added expansion things and all sorts of stuff in this. So we loved Twilight Imperium third edition so much that we went ahead and upgraded because we heard nothing but good things about this one. We haven't even played this one yet, but the changes are um, good so we want to keep this one. We, we decided to do this. If you have Twilight Imperium, 3rd Edition, yeah, you, that's another awesome game. You cannot go wrong with that. My first play was last year, which is why this is new to the list. And, oh my goodness. I was stunned. I really was finding it hard to believe all the talk about, oh, I love this game, and blah, blah, blah. Because I'm like, okay, how do you stay engaged with the game for 8 hours? And really actually like the game. And it's not like one of those mega games where you're walking around. I'm like, this is a board game. Okay, and we're going to be playing this for 8 to 12 hours. That's nuts. And I was trying to think, what can you possibly be doing? Well, <laughs> the 4X is really come into play in this one in a very full way. You've got a huge galaxy. 
you're going out and you're doing the exploration and you sure you might be conquering places and you're going to do some political maneuvering and tech building and fleet building and traveling and you're doing all of this in a grand scale every turn and when your opponent does something you're not just sitting there passively watching them because a first of all you need to see what they're doing and where they're starting to head you know what are they developing you need to keep track of these things and b you have a action that you get to take in response to everything they have so they'll have a main action they do and then we have kind of like a smaller action reaction sort of thing that we can do as well so you're constantly in the game doing something moving planning plotting whatever it is and it really does keep you busy all of the different races i i've played this one time now you've played what three times uh, and three or four yeah and I haven't even touched, obviously, scraped the surface of the races and things, but I love the fact that they're they're all asymmetrical. They all have different abilities, different, you know, goals, interests, you name it. Very diverse group. And the minis are neat. The art is very awesome. The cards, once you learn how to play, it's pretty straightforward. It's, you're like, okay, I know how my turn's supposed to roll. You know, it just kind of steamrolls the way it's supposed to go. Oh, you did something? Okay, so now it's a reaction time. We do this, and then we move on. Oh, it's time to vote. Okay, you know, it's just everything just makes sense. It flows really well, and you are engaged the whole time. I was actually pretty tired after we played the first game because you're in, you're on. You don't want to take a break from it. It's really hard to pull away from this game and say, oh, let's, let's break for lunch or something. Oh my gosh, it's, it's tough to do because you really are in. You want to be in and finish it. So I really, if you want to dive into an immersive game that's going to take you a while, you don't have to worry about the time, oh, you need to try out Twilight Imperium. Just awesome. Awesome, awesome. Love it. Yeah. So it's my number two. Um... <laughs> I can't add too much more than that. I will say that um, the play times of this vary, vary vastly oh, depending yes. on how many new players you have involved. It goes up almost yeah. exponentially every time you add another new player because um, you have it, to learn. It, everything. It's a lot to take in. There's going to be a there can be a lot of questions. This game benefits from a facilitator. Yeah, someone who knows the game, knows the rules, knows the flow can answer questions quickly and yeah. concisely. The first time I played this, there was a, a great person, I can't think of the his name flies out of my head, but he was a great facilitator. He's like, okay, this is your turn. This is what yeah, you need to do. Man. Okay, now that he did that, now you can do this, you can do this. And, and, and he handled the combats and organized them and was able to, to walk us through the combats. And it really benefits from having someone who knows the game. Now, that, that, that said, I, d I don't say... You know, if you're brand new and you have a, a new game, a game group that's never played, I do not say don't play this. Definitely play it, but it's going to take. Longer. It's going to take. A, it's going to take a long. You're going to have to allocate a big bucket of time to play this game because it's. But so her 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 pick is Twilight Imperium three, but I want to talk about Twilight Imperium four just a little bit. I mean, I haven't played it, but I read the rules and I am incredibly excited about the changes they've made. Uh, I think it's going to streamline it. Like she said, they're going to streamline the game. The game's going to go quicker. It's going to be easier to learn. There's going to be a, almost like a mid-game, and the game changes. So you really can kind of say, hey, this stuff is going to happen at some point. I mean, you can even teach it that way. Hey, this stuff's going to happen at some point. We'll talk about it when it happens, and you can do like almost a, a mini teach at that point. So it can help. Cool. It can help teach the game because moving, there's yeah. like negotiations and and voting on laws and things like that that don't happen right off the bat. Like in Twilight Three, it's right off the bat you're doing that stuff, right? And uh, like she said, it adds some of the expansion stuff that we did not have with Twilight Three, Imperium Three. So I'm excited. I haven't. I've only played with that stuff one time. So I'm excited to try that stuff out. It's just, I'm just. I can, yeah, I can go on and on, but this is her list, so we'll we'll move on. Oh, you're talking about my baby right here. I love it. Yeah, yeah no, this is great. It's my number eight for a reason, and it, most likely, I honestly, I could see it going up. Like you said, it's your number two. I wouldn't be surprised to see that go higher on my list in the future with another play. Just one more play, and that'd be all it takes, right? Yep. <sighs> okay, my number seven has been on my list from the get go. 
It was my number, let me look, let me look. Oh, it was my number 10 the year before. And the year before that, it was my number four. So it has bounced around in this top 10 a little bit. I think it benefited from an expansion. And this is another beast of a game, and that is Zaya, Legends of a Drift System. I am not going to stand it straight up because we bit the bullet and got the monster insert. <laughs> so I, I think I could, but... No, the, with, the, think... with the insert we got, you can do whatever you want to with it. <laughs> Check that action out, people. <laughs> yeah, that's we'll talk, awesome. We'll show you the insert after. We're actually okay. Chit chats. Yes, so Zaya, Legends of a Drift System. Oh my goodness. So we fell in love with this game when we first got it, but it was a three plus players. Oh, we hardly, at that point in time when we got this, we hardly ever had a consistent group that could play this for that period of time. So we're like, oh, this is rough. So we kind of finagled playing it two player with some kind of made up variants. And it was a little clunky, but we had a blast with it anyway. We love this game. It's another sandbox, space, exploration, you name it kind of game. I mean, you can go and do all sorts of things with this game. I'll talk about in a second. But then... They came out with the expansion that, oh my goodness, it fixed it. It made it so you can play it two-player. It's got some little, like, bot ships that are program movement and things, too. That I mean, they kind of tweaked those a little bit. And the ships and the tech upgrades and, oh, man. They, they finessed the game to where it just, uh, again, that's probably why it jumped from my 10 to my 7 is that expansion did amazing things to this game for us. Because we already loved it with it in its broken format. And, and, well, it was broken to us. And now, oh my gosh, that expansion's amazing. It's like a whole new game. So what you're doing in Zaya, it really is a sandbox game. You're trying to get fame. That's your victory points in this. And how do you become famous? Well, you can be a merchant. You can kind of be a pirate. It's like Merchants and Marauders, but in space. You can go and attack ships and steal their goods or you can go and become a merchant or you can go and try to mine things off of comets and stuff which are really risky or you can fly around and explore places and oh my gosh there's so many um, accomplishing missions so many different things that you can do in this game you can do a little bit of all of them or you can just focus on one it doesn't matter you get to pick you get to roll the dice you decide if you want to explore before you jump in a new area or as you've probably heard the jokes you can fly straight into the sun you never know um, the nice thing is it's got that almost video game quality to it so if you do fly into the sun and you blow up well guess what boop, boop, you kind of reboot get a new ship start fresh <laughs> and so there's not this grueling I must rebuild it's gonna take me hours to rebuild I'm never gonna recover from this no you get to dive right back in it's not quite as great as you had it, but you're able to dive right back in and pretty much pick up where you left off. It's pretty awesome. The art in this is fantastic. The miniatures are pre-painted and they're gorgeous. And I don't know why I'm just talking about them and not showing you this ridiculousness. The other beauty in here is the insert itself, which if you get really invested in this game like we did, it is worth every penny i flipped this thing upside down you saw well, there's me a few little things and there's a couple place. little chips out of place and that's it because we don't have a top type but here these are the different tiles so you can see the really cool kind of hex shaped art's really neat on these but the ships let's see here let's just pull a little dude out all right you, you know how to operate this better than i do was this uh, Broken Token or Meeple Realty? Meeple Realty? Meeple Realty did this one, and it is fantastic. So you've got, oh look, colored trays for all the different items that you could yeah. trade for. Yeah, and they're all in the box ready to go. You can see the ships inside the box. They're absolutely stunning. I love them. They're so beautiful. Well, I was going to bring another one out so you can show them off. Here, open this one for me. You're better at it. The cards, they're real bright. They're pretty. The, um, gosh... Like the, uh, let's see, the NPCs. These are the NPCs. I love these. So here you've got the little comets. I love these. I don't know if you can see them. I hope you can see those. The comets and different NPC ships. And it's even labeled NPC. Let's check that out. And some of those were the, some of the level one ships. They're 
listed on the box. I just love this. They actually tell you that they are what level. Totally beautiful game. So much fun to play. And this one is much shorter than Twilight Imperium. <laughs> I suppose you could go crazy somehow if you play some crazy game with full player count and stuff. But I think even then it would not touch. Well, though you can you can like... change your victory point goal. That's true. You That's can, true you too. You can go anywhere from ten for a short game up to twenty five if you want to spend all day playing. That'd be amazing. Yeah. And it is really fun, and it's really easy to be like, you know what? Let's keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> we always feel that way every time. It's pretty amazing. Yep. So that is Zaya, my number seven. So Zaya is my... <laughs> bless you. Zaya is my number nine. I don't like it quite as much, but I love it. I mean, it's top ten. It's still amazing. Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, the I think the, the expansion actually did something for the game um, with the two-player rules, and you can even play it yeah. solo. Um, and oh, it that's right. It fixed several of the issues of the, the base game. If you want to call them issues, you, you it's a roll to, roll and move game, so you can potentially roll one 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 and not. <laughs> but there's a mod that makes them, gives you a minimum roll. There's a, a there's kind of a flaw in the merchanting merchanting that you can just if two systems are really close together, you could oh, pick yeah. up and, and just it just zip back and forth back and forth between them. Obviously, the way you fix that is you kill kill that person that's trying to do that. <laughs> but in this game, it adds it's actually true. adds an economy and basically there's kind of a supply and demand. So yes. if you keep turning in the same good, it's not going to be you're not going to be able to get get more of it to, to yeah. give out, right? forces you to actually divert your course right. a little bit and try different places. And I actually liked that because it almost made it too easy because I usually try to find that one merchant place that was really good, and while you were off fighting other players, I would just go, ooh, merchant, 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 and try to win that way. And it's so much more fun when you actually have to struggle a little bit to do that stuff and watch out for the other ships. And <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So that's another... Heavy game there. They're out of space, Rima. Uh oh. Slide out of space. Up here. Man, and we're only on number seven. <laughs> All right. I could put that up to reach. You That's too over. funny. So now we're on to my number six, and it was my number thirteen last year, and I think the reason it's gone up is because of a funky little expansion called Mocha and Bakshish. 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 This is my surprise. So what was what last year? It was 13 last year. What? And it is my number six. And that I would, I would Istanbul. Never, I would never call this being a top 10 game. You didn't you. think so? No. I, oh, man. Not even. I don't know why. I love this game. It. Okay, first of all, initially, it's kind of like Zion, the fact that um, each game... You start out and you lay out the tiles. They're going to be in a different assortment. So your game's never going to be the same layout. The board's going to be different every time because it's little modules. And sometimes you're going to have things really close by that work well together. Like you had a... The first time we played this, you had the gambling house in another place that let place you kind of like cash where you, in. Where you can buy rubies for money. Oh, that's right. Buy rubies for money. So he would go and he would go and gamble and get a bunch of... Um, Rubies and stuff, and then go and money. get money for it, and then no, go and go to gamble, get money, money, and Take then go the and get, get rubies. rubies yeah. yeah, so he was doing this crazy thing, and rubies, you know, ramp up the game really fast. Yeah, and so, and then the next game, they were on opposite ends of the board, and your hopes were dashed. No more gambling for you. It was, you know, it's just, I still went gambling, but not. Yeah, it wasn't. Quite. It's just there's all these goods you can do. You can go to the post office. I I don't know what it is about this game. I just think it's so much. fun fun to go run around in these different places and um oh my goodness i'm trying to find it where all the tiles and stuff Let's see if i can find a few to talk to you about here's see they got cute little rubies let's see here so we have yeah the coffee house the tavern a guild hall a roasting plant spice warehouse fabric warehouse a small mosque Fruit Warehouse, Police Station, Tea House, Wainwright, Small Market, Gemstone Dealer. So all of these places have different goods or different things that you do with those goods. And there's quite a variety of different goods that you're doing. And you're trying to get this mix and get um, victory points and things for that. Okay. What's fun, though, is... Let's see here. The Does it say... 
What are you wanting? I want to know who the... It just says family member. We make a joke that it's like some rogue cousin or nephew or something, you know, making it up. But at the police station, there's a relative that's there that you can bail them out, I guess, and send them to do errands for you, and they'll go do stuff, and then they get busted or whatever and put back in the police station. It's just a little side thing that I just, I don't know why I find that hysterical. <laughs> and, but the game also, you have to really plan your turns because I can't go to the space he's on unless I pay like heavy fines. And money is so tight in this game. You don't want to go where somebody is. You don't want to go anywhere. I mean, you want to avoid people if at all possible. At least I've always wanted to because I just, I never could afford to just be like, oh yeah, here you go. I'll keep going. And so you're trying to plan out turns. Okay, well, what's my backup plan? Oh, he went over there now. Okay, I'm going to back up. I, I just love that about this game. I love the planning involved, building up the stuff and watching everything go. And the, like the post office, you kind of level it up, so to speak, and get certain things out of it. And it's just kind of a fun, visually appealing, silly decision game. So, I know, he doesn't understand why I like it either. I, I just, I couldn't tell you. I just think it's really fun. I love the fact that it's modular, and all these tiles are going to come laid out completely differently every game you play. So you're going to have to completely uh, re-strategize how best to be efficient about your, um, making your victory points. That's just all there is to it. So. These, these are your victory points. Exactly. <laughs> how do you get those beautiful, beautiful rubies? All right, so Istanbul is my number 38. So he's still very high up. It's high, ish. Mm -hmm. It was my 50 last year, so like you, it went up for me. But yeah, the expansion didn't great. go up to top 10 area. Well, I was, <laughs> mine was already almost there. So yeah, so I think that the the expansion definitely adds something to the game, and it, it gives the you copy more, was fun. It was just having that extra um, good to work good with. work with. Yeah, yeah. and it just it, it just makes the board more interesting, more things to do. It's a fun little game. It's it's one of those games where you're, uh, it's, it's pseudo worker placement. You're basically moving yeah. a guy around and wherever he ends up, that's you do the action, action. of that space. So it's kind of worker placement-ish. Um, you have these, uh, I think they're assistants or something that you follow. Yeah, the assistants yeah. Uh, that you drop off and do things and it eventually you have to kind of reset them. and, and It's almost like laying a track yeah. of where you've been, sort of. You have to kind of pay through... So yeah, so it's a good. I mean, it's a it's a good kind of. I wouldn't say light Euro game. It's more of a midweight no, Euro it's mid game, and uh, it's fun. I mean, it's it doesn't blow me away, but it's thirty eight, so it's obviously pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's solid. Um, I don't know. There's much more to say about that. For me, about it's addictive. Cover. Would you like a ruby? <laughs> He's very excited to show off his rubies. I don't know if I'd That's be how you win the game. He's like, I don't know he's if... like that was me in the first game. Look, I win. <laughs> that, that, this is this is Hunter right here. I the win. problem is, though, you're in the middle of a busy market. You're like, hey, look, a handful of rubies. Those would be smacked out of your hand in like half a second. I still, this is I still, unrealistic. I still win. I still win. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, he is, Joe Bob here is very excited to show off the rubies. But yeah, it's, it's a really fun game. I love it. I love planning my movement. I still don't and get I that love this is the uniqueness. 10. I just love how unique it is. It still, it still blows my mind. It's top I know. 10 for it's, you. it's like puzzly to me. Well, there know. is your problem. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's super fun. All right. Give me grief right, about my look, number six. Let's get a real game going here. This one's funny. This one I'm going to call my yo yo because it's number five. Last year it was number three. Year before that, it was number five. So it has returned to apparently its home. It has come home in number five, the castles of Mad King Ludwig. Ah, this is like my go-to camping game. I don't know why this always gets taken with me when I go camping. I play the tar out of this game. I love this game. What you're doing, you've got all these unique pieces and you are building a castle. But each of the rooms is unique and some of them benefit by being next to other rooms while others they give you negative points if they're next to them. And you've got this great bidding system. You have to bid with your opponents on the rooms that are available each round. And there's end of game scoring based off of different things. It could be the size of the rooms. Like it could say all round rooms are going to score the most at the end of the game. It's different every time. So it changes the game up every single time. 
Um, there are great expansions for this that people rave about. We haven't even gotten those yet. We just have the base game. I do eventually want to get the moats and swans or whatever that is and play that too. But Secrets. Secrets. <laughs> but this, oh my goodness. And there's an upstairs and a downstairs, and you can only build the downstairs rooms if you've built a, a staircase down. There's a dungeon down there too, one of the rooms. And I must show you. Oops, we've had a slight accident. I tipped it a bit much. But uh, this is one of the games that we love, so we got the insert for this too. You can pull out the trays and play, basically. But here, like, here's the 600 pointer. And it'll tell you on the back, like, it could possibly be one of these three types of rooms. So when, so when they're face down, you can kind of plan out, ooh, if I get a bonus by getting all the garden buildings, I might want to try getting a tile like this, because I might have that on it. And then you flip it over, and it tells you about the room. It gives you the victory points. If you get a special scoring based off of anything, it'll put it in the middle. And it has the symbol for what type of room it is here. So sometimes they'll give you stuff and say, oh, this one, you know, this one has a little cozy room. It's a little fire, like living area or something and doesn't have any negatives for having a certain type of room with it so there's that you know and then you might have like these nice cute little round room it's a theater <laughs> but unfortunately if you have bedrooms or like living rooms or some work rooms right next to it those are negative points so you don't want those rooms touching this one they're very finicky at the theater they don't want distractions then I have this lovely little pumpkin garden is that lovely? But it has to be outside. See the fence? You must have this not touching any other walls. There's all these different little things like this. They have cute little hallways where you can tack on a whole bunch of rooms. You have bonuses for closing off the rooms, all the entrances and exits. Uh, once you finish a room, you get, depending on the type of room that you just closed off, you get certain perks. It might be anything from an extra turn to you get a free staircase or something like that. It just depends on what it is. And that's in short what the game is I love playing this game you get to build this crazy castle what oh is it sitting oh it's sitting a little funny but yeah you get to build this crazy castle and each time it's gonna be completely different because it just is based off of what you're able to bid for what the end game bonuses are um, thinking of which let's see round rooms outdoor rooms um, the smaller half of the rooms, uh, music rooms, like any of the theater rooms, ooh, downstairs rooms. <laughs> uh, if you, how many rooms you get, the most rooms that are, have all the exits sealed. The most bedrooms, you can see there's a huge variety of different reasons, uh, different endgame scoring on this. It's on top of just the regular scoring for the rooms. It's an addictive game. As soon as we finish it, we typically want to play it again. And if I'm camping, we usually do. So, that's my number five. So... The Greatness. I wouldn't go that far. Oh, it's Greatness. So, this is not a surprise. I do not remotely like the game as much as she does. It's my... Uh, uh, where is it? I saw it. Way down the list somewhere. So sad. So sad for him. <laughs> Doesn't nobody's... 73. Missing. What? There's something wrong with you. I like it enough for both of us such a pretty game. Why are you looking at it like... Yeah, I so, um, yeah, I, I, I enjoy this game. This is not one of my super duper favorites. I like it. I like the, the auctioning. I like really the hate auctioning. <laughs> yeah, it always ends up hate auctioning. Yeah, so basically, there's, there, I don't know if she went over it, but basically when you auction off the rooms, the, the auction ear, I guess, mm -hmm. the person that decides the auction... Decides how much each of the rooms that's up for bid, how much they're going to cost. And then everyone else gets to pick first and you get whatever's left over. But if they buy a room, you get the money. So it's a balance of do you want money at the same time do you want to give them a good room. So, But I tend to hate auction. That's why I don't usually do well at this game. It's like, ooh, I know she wants that. 15000 <laughs> I'm like, I can't even possibly afford this. Exactly. And you're like, ah, oh, get another staircase. I don't care. Yeah. It's hilarious. But yeah, it's a great game. It's just not a... Uh... Not one of my faves, but you are you are. Oh, I love that game. I could play like it over and over. You're like gaga over it. I am, and I just have the base game. And there are people that swear by playing with the moat and all this stuff. And I just, just proof positive how fun that game is. I haven't even bothered with any expansions. Love it. That's my number five. So my number four 
was my number seven last year, and I think that it has only increased in my love for it because of more plays. That tells you how much I love this game, and it also happens to be my favorite Feld. Do, 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 do. Trajan! <laughs> it gets, it gets with the music. It gets, yes, it gets its Roman fanfare. <laughs> it is... Oh, Feld. Nah, good stuff. So, you get to be Trajan, and you get to control all the crazy stuff going on in your empire. So, you've got to go and explore... Um, a map on the top part of the board and you're getting some goods and stuff from that but it's kind of area control because there's victory points associated with each region and then you've got um, shipping and goods you got some merchant action going on and you can go and do get a bunch of different goods and sell them and get victory points and money and all this kind of stuff and then you've got uh, your popularity with the Senate you need to become more popular with the Senate and that gives you the perk of going first I think the next round and some other things at the end of the game associated with again victory points you've also got another little maze area where you can go through and you have to take a tile you kind of start from anywhere but after that you have to take something that was touching that one before um, orthogonally so you're going through and kind of weaving your way around getting a bunch of different uh, perks from that and then the last one there is a oh goodness well you do have a kind of a I don't want to say feed your people payment thing but there's always like a good or something that's due at the end of each round you have to kind of keep an eye out for and uh, which there's an area that exclusively has those goods and you can do certain things to get those they're a little tougher to get so there's a lot going on with that and then what I particularly like is the way you choose your actions and how you're gonna do that through the game and you've got this little rondelle thing and you're moving different colored um, Squares, squares? I think they're little hexes. hexes. Yeah. yeah, they're little hexes around. And the colors are associated with certain things. And where you land, what section you're in, is what kind of actions you're going to take. So you're planning out, okay, if I move around to here, it's going to cost me this much movement, but I get to do these actions, and I get to do this here and there, and it tells you where on the board you're going to be doing what each time. And each time you do that, though, you're spending this time, and there's a little time track that keeps um, keeps track for you. And once you go around that, that's been a year. And so when you do that, then things happen, like you have to pay your people or things reset, and there's something going on each time, right? So you want to keep track of those and not do too many things that cost a whole lot of movement or time but at the same time you get to do so much if you do that so there's this really this is probably one of his heaviest felds uh, of his design because it's so much balancing with this you've got to balance your actions versus the time that it takes to do those things and there's so many things to do it's his point salad system again you have a lot going on you can't really let anybody completely run away with any section because a runaway in any section could possibly just clean house on victory points. So you really need to pay attention to what's going on. You want a good balance of things, but you, you do typically focus on one over the others, right? Usually. To try to to try to run away with some victory points. Yeah. And I just I love that. I like the Roman theme, of course, because you know, hey, that's that's my shtick. But it's just I really like how much this game makes you think and how much balancing and it's just it's a great brain burner i love trajan yes so it's my number 24 it's not my favorite feld <laughs> it's up there oh, i was gonna say it's mostly um probably my favorite part is she, she kind of hit on it is the the action selection part yeah but on top of that it has almost kind of a puzzle as much as i dislike puzzles i actually like this puzzle <laughs> is you're trying to build your actions in such a way that you get the right combination of hexes to land in a square and if you get like let's say you get a pink a yellow and a green i'm just making up colors um you get a you get a like a, a tile and a benefit right so yeah. um it's just it's just fun. Uh, it's it's basically it's almost it reminds me of almost like a I wouldn't say a video game, but there's all these little mini games going on, right? So, yeah, so you, yeah. You got to kind of balance. Okay, where do I want to focus? You know, what is the other person doing? Do I need to do some blocking of what they're doing, or can I focus in on what I 
uh, yeah, I want to do. Yeah. It's a real, a real kind of a cat and mouse game. It's like, oh, well, she's running away with the map. I, I can't, you know. I yeah, need, I've got to go I, explore. I need to go do something up there. But I really want to do trading. And, and oh, oh no, I got, I got to get these two items at the end of the round, and I haven't even started on that yet. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, a lot to. It's, it's like a juggling act of what you want to do, right? It is. It's, it's fantastic. It's a, it's a really good game. This is usually, I wouldn't say usually, for a lot of people, this is the number one felt, including Rebecca. So, um, this is a lot of people's favorite felt Trajan. Yeah, I like the uh, I like the map aspect more. I know this has a little bit of a map. That's kind of a like a, these are like mini games, but I yeah. like I like uh, like Amerigo and no, oh, yeah, Oracle, map games. Oracle that you yeah, actually you're that. actually moving around a map and doing things. And on this the one map. it's only across like the top third. Yeah. So yeah, there's not as much map action going. on. And you on. can almost get away with ignoring the map. Almost. 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 Somebody gets to really exploring though. It doesn't take much to where you're like, oh, 10 victory points here, 6 victory points there. You know, you just start grabbing nope, stuff. This is a good one. This is a good one. So Good choice. Good choice. Trajan. Love it. I won't fault you. <laughs> Your first good one. So. You didn't say anything. I'm ignoring you. <laughs> I am totally ignoring you. My top three bounce back and forth quite frequently. Um, to where... I could probably say they're almost interchangeable for me at this point because I love all three of them very, 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 very much. Uh, my number three was actually my number one the last two years. Uh-oh. Yes. And I know it's really tough for you to tell that I love me some fleet captains. I already mentioned it a little bit before when I was talking about Ascendancy. This still just edges it out of hair for me. I there, there is just something about the being able to play with the characters and right. have I agree. those character cards. They they have unique abilities that actually they did a pretty good job of trying to match them with the personalities of the actual characters too. So it's not that, you know, McCoy usually does something with healing people or something, or Scotty repairs something, or his, his stats do something to benefit the shi uh, ship. And it's just, they're really, really well done. So, and you can mix and match, so you end up getting Picard and Spock together on a ship, which would be a glorious thing, right? And you can do that in this. And you've got different ships, and the ships are the hero clicks set up, so they've got the stats on the bottom, so you know instantly what you can and can't do with your ship just by looking at it, and your opponents can too, so there's not the whole, the whole back and forth of going, okay, where are you at now again? You, you've you been shot, right? Yeah, you can tell by looking at it that that's happened. And you get to, the you set up your, your galaxy ahead of time, but you flip over and explore the tiles as you go. So you are still exploring the galaxy. It's still unknown until you go and explore it. And it's fun because sometimes there's a, a race for that, right? Because some of the goals include, well, you've explored... 12 different sectors well you need to get moving yeah. <laughs> because his he might have a similar goal so everybody's racing because you get credit for the ones that you flipped over there's little tokens you put on them no, actually you face it towards oh that's you. right you face it towards you that's right and there's some things that you put tokens on for other for stuff but for you, you can scan just like zai you can either scan it either first. go ahead and jump ahead and what happens happens or you can scan first yeah and there's a bit of a risk. I don't think it's quite as risky as Zaya in that you don't usually flat out die, but you can have some pretty rough encounters if your right. ship's not prepared. So it's it's wonderful. I love the the hero clicks. I love. I'll kind of pull it out here and let you peek at it because I mean, come on, it's my number three. Obviously, it's uh, gotten a little bit moved around, <laughs> but here we go. Um, <laughs> Here is the USS Venture. See, it's great. It's They're sturdy as all get out. And then the click, you just click them on the bottom here and slide it around and it's got the little scale on it where it's got your shields and uh, phasers and movement and all that kind of good stuff on there. So the ships, they're all like that. The base game comes with the Klingons and the Federation, but we've got the Romulans and the Cardassians, is it? Romulans? Dominion. Dominion. Oh my gosh, that's right. The Dominion. So the Romulans and the Dominion. Awesome, 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 awesome. And each group... Oh, I didn't even talk about the decks. What's great is they come with... Good grief, what is it? Like 12 different decks? 
of cards. Yeah. And you combine three of them to build your your deck that you're going to be using because it's kind of a deck builder thing. What's great about that is each of those 12 decks does something different. They have different focuses. So say I have the Klingons, but I don't necessarily want to do much cloaking. There's certain decks that are really good at cloaking. I might want to be like, okay, I'm going to set those aside and do something else. So I might want to do one that has more diplomacy or something like that or espionage. And they have certain characters in each deck um, that are unique to that deck. And then they have the special abilities and focus on those. And it's great. You've got different missions. You've got combat missions. You've got science missions and influence missions. Some of them uh, you have face up. Everybody knows what you're doing. Some of them are secret missions that you have to accomplish and you can't show them until you've actually accomplished them. Then you flip them over for the victory points and that. A lot of fun. I love the interactions. They have episode information too on the encounters. Let's see here. Yes, the encounter deck. <laughs> and... Uh, they are usually related to episodes. They might even be called, I'm trying to think of some of the Tribbles. There you go. There's a Tribbles encounter. And guess what? It's very much like the episode. <laughs> They're overrun. You have to figure out what to do with it. It's pretty awesome. So there is so much going on in this. It is ooh, Star Trek in a box. I'll let you do that. Yeah. <laughs> and the rules... There, there's quite a bit to absorb at first, but this game is very intuitive, so we don't always get to jump right in and play this very often, but when we do, it's getting easier and easier to jump right into this game because it's so familiar. You're already familiar with the universe a little bit, and how you roll your run your turn, they've got little cheat cards too that help, and once you do that, you really don't need to spend a whole lot of time re going over those rules again. I love Fleet Captains. It's really hard for me to say no to a game of that any time. Right. So, <laughs> so uh, Fleet Captains is my number eight. I do, just like her, I prefer this over Ascendancy. I, I, I enjoy, like she said, the characters. I love the encounters. The I know that Ascendancy has encounters as well, and some of them are you know, episodes and things like that. But this yeah. one is really... Like I said, like Ascendancy is kind of pulled back. This is kind of the big this scale. This in. one is kind of more zoomed in. I mean, you still have the, the battles, but you're not really conquering planets and things like that. You're going out exploring. You're doing missions. You're having encounters. You're fighting each other. It's more episodic compared to the other ones. More of a, I don't even know, movie's the right word, but it's more pulled back yeah. to the grand, bigger scale. Um, love this one. This one's awesome. Um, like she said, it's a little long. This is another game that you can scale it to um, how long. How much one time, bit. yeah. Because the, you don't scale it by the number of victory points. You scale it by the size of the map, right? If you make the, if you make the, the two players farther apart from each other, it's harder to get those combat missions, and it makes the game a little bit longer, right? Um, you can still kind of zoom across and get into the fights, but it's still going to take time to, to, to trek your way trek. Trek your way across the board. <laughs> well played. <laughs> so, uh, no, this is just an awesome game. I love it. We haven't even cracked open the Dominion. It's still sitting on our self No, shame. we haven't. So, uh, we, need, we, need, we, need, we, need to, we need to open that up and play it because it's purple. The ships are purple. Okay. Is the, go grab it. Grab it. Grab it real quick. Oh, it's right there. Look at this. Is it still in shrink? Did I actually open it? No, you've opened it. If it was in shrink, I'd cry a little. <laughs> so, this is... We got this one. I got this one at the Ding and Dent at Dice Tower Con. I told you how oh my goodness, it. these are purple! Yeah, the ships are purple! Look at <laughs> that. No wonder you were like, they're purple. I was thinking, okay, that's special. No, they're purple! Because the Klingons are green, kind of this military olive green, and Federation's their gray color, and that is the Romulans, purple. Yeah. Romulans are... And Federation, yeah. Federation, yeah. They're, they're boring. Yeah, but that's definitely not boring. Oh, those crazy Dominion. So All right, go. good choice. I love I me some Star Trek. I can't argue with this one. Yes. Kind of, you're kind of getting making your pile. You always have at the end of your video. I know it's great. I love it. <laughs> All right, so here is. Yeah, just put that. I'm going to call this game Old Reliable because Old Reliable is my number two this year. No was way. Was my number oh, two. I'm reacting last to her. Year, I'm reacting to her number one. And it was my number two the first year. Two all the way through. Two all the way through. And that is Vidiculture. Don't be fooled. 
We put it in our Tuscany box because we liked it. Because <laughs> we get the it. art and stuff a little better. But um, the oh, viticulture. Why is it my number two? It's always my number two. It's so funny. And it's just, <laughs> this was the game that really got us really back into, like, heavy board gaming again. It was so funny because we hesitated with this game for the longest time. We're like, oh, this theme sounds so boring. And how could this be fun? People are talking about this game all the time, though. And just, oh, we waffled back and forth. Would it even be good two-player? We don't know. Blah, 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 blah. We finally were like, fine, well, let's just go buy it. And we love it. I, oh my goodness, I love this game. I could play this game over and over and over and over and over. You are building your fields, growing your grapes, harvesting said grapes, and then processing them into wine, and then selling them off in fulfilling orders. But, with the expansion this is, you have four seasons, and the original you only have basically the half of the year. You have it split into six months. And... Each season, you get to do certain things, and you've got your little workers that you place, but you also have a grande worker who is sort of like a, uh, for lack of a better word, we'll just say like a, he's a grande worker. You can put him anywhere, and um, sometimes you there's things that he can do that the other uh, regular workers can't do. So you go through and you're trying to get orders and trying to get things that you can grow in your fields and there's a bunch of different people that are in the winemaking field that give you bonuses or give you extra money to build things or they give you buildings for free or cheaper and there's all this stuff going on. Meanwhile, you're trying to fulfill all these orders as quickly as you can to beat your opponent and get the victory points. I haven't won this in quite a while lately because you get this crazy winemaking engine going at the tail end and it's like whew, he flies away with the victory points. Do I care? No, because I have a blast with this game. I love it. Now, I'm not going to spend the extra 10 minutes that it would take to describe all the weird variations with the expansions and weird things that they've done with this, but this is the original first expansion to Viticulture Tuscany. And it is modular and you can add different things to it. There are some things in here that we will never play Viticulture without again, like Mamas and Papas, for example. There's an expansion that um, makes it so it's a little bit asymmetrical with your start. You start with a little bit of a different setup than another person now, which is cool because before you start with the exact same thing and off you go. So this kind of brought it up. And then there's other different specialty meeples that do certain things. There's like a messenger person or something and he gets to go a season ahead and kind of like hold a spot for you. Um, and there's some that'll let you go like a season behind and do something that was already covered or some weirdness. And there's all these different things going on. And there's a, now you, uh, f I think a formaggio or something like that. Like you can do cheese yep. and apples and all these other productions, not just wine anymore. It's just so much fun. And there's it's a smooth... This is probably the smoothest game to play. The smoothest game we own. It is amazingly smooth. Once you learn it, it's not that hard to just pick it up and play again. We can play it right now. Probably wouldn't have to refresh the rules, but maybe like 10 seconds worth. And we haven't played it in a while. It's that smooth. It's that well-designed. Just fantastic game. The art's beautiful. I... I don't know what else I could say on that, honestly. It was just a really, really well done game. Super fun to play. And I love it. Alright. So it's my number seven. See? It, two years ago, it was my number one game. So I love, love this game. Uh, it's creeped down the list a little bit because my tastes have gone a little heavier. But this is the game whenever any, uh, I wouldn't say experienced gamer, but a gamer asks the question, "Hey, what game should I get?" Yeah, this if the, the, this is the one I go to, it, unless they're like a new to the new to the board game. Yeah, this is this is the one. What 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 should I get? Yeah, viticulture, so viticulture. Get viticulture. You want to get viticulture? Hey, we're a couple and we play games two player. What should I get? Viticulture. We're a group of four players. We like worker placement games. What should I get? Viticulture. Viticulture. <laughs> viticulture. I, it we, works in so many levels. We have been pushing this game like for the entire life of our channel. This is <laughs> if you have not, if you play me, like the medium games and you have not played viticulture, you should give it a try. It's a disservice. <laughs> to not have it's played really this game, fun. and she would, she didn't want to go into the expansions, but I will. The <laughs> Viticulture and Tuscany don't do not exist anymore unless you're getting it on the secondhand market. They're called 
Viticulture Essentials and Tuscany Essentials now. Viticulture Essentials is the old Viticulture plus a little bit of Tuscany. Tuscany Essentials is almost everything else. So um, if you're just wanting to start out and give it a try, you want, you're looking for Viticulture Essentials is the game you want to get. Um, and that will give you a taste whether you're going to like the game or not. If you like it, then I strongly encourage getting Tuscany Essentials because it, it opens up so many more really choices. And it's a modular it. expansion. So you can say, I like this, I don't like this, I like this, I don't like this. You can try them all out. Yeah. There's, they have a almost like a, they call it a legacy system where you kind of go through each module. And we kind of did that. Um, basically, the way it works is whoever won the game picks, picks, the, picks next the next module yeah, to try fun. out, right? it was very fun. And the way it works is you can play with all the Tier 1s and all the Tier 2s, but then only one of the Tier 3s. And the Tier 3s are add. The reason you don't want to play with all of them because it adds a lot to the game. Like, it's the Formaggio, you're selling cheese and things like that. There's They're big yeah. expansions. Um, you would want to play. And I guess you were crazy to play with all of them. I, I, yeah. I don't know yeah. if they're function all together, but... I don't know. Uh, it, I think it, it would probably unbalance the game. So. Yeah, it, it just, this game is amazing. It is. It really is. And it's it's really hard for me to describe. I'm like, it's just so smooth. It's just a relaxing game to play. It's really fun. But you still have to think about it. You still need to plan. It's But it's just not that intense, really tight, stressful game that a lot of the other games are. This has a more laid back feel to it. And but it has just the, the right amount of tightness, right? Yeah, it is. You, it's you not, it's not a cakewalk by yeah. any stretch. I mean, you could block out a lot right. of my stuff. You don't have to but... think about what the other... I mean, like any worker placement. Yeah, you have to think you... about what the other player is going to do and what you need to do first, that yeah. sort of thing. But yeah. it's really smooth. It's I think it's... It, for the the weight of the game, it is easy to learn. Yes, yes. It's fantastic. So, if we hadn't ranted and raved enough... And now, too, with the Tuscany stuff, it's one to six players. Was Viticulture one to... I think it was. Might have been. Yeah. But that's worth checking out, too, if you're into the solo gaming. And I think it would be easy to figure out how to do it if it wasn't. Oh, yeah. Uh, all of uh, Jamie Stigmeyer's games usually have a, oh, so a solo, solo v uh, variant. And I think I tried it. I, I, I like it. But uh, it solo and it's not really for me, but um, all I played the Scythe game solo, and it, it worked out great. So I, I would think he's that really good at, at automating, uh, uh, I guess, a character. Basically, I... It, so, you can, you can it. so you can play it. That's play. so cool. Yeah. So yeah, you're not forced to play multiple characters and right. balance it. That's cool. I yeah, will go over here with it. So it's so funny that we have like. <laughs> Why is he doing this? You, you ask. You, you've seen the light. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> this game has bounced back and forth. It's my number one this year. It was my number eight. Last year, and then the year before that was my number three. And really, it's always been kind of floating around in the top three, but now it has arrived. Oh my, has it Welcome arrived. Welcome to the real world. Another heavy hitter, War of the Ring, second edition, right? Yes. Oh my goodness. Now, if you've watched our channel, you're going to be like, well, duh, okay, you probably saw this coming, possibly. I didn't see this coming as your number one at all. That's pretty cool. At all. So... All right, but I've ranted and raved about it, and, and mostly raved because I love it. This is Tolkien in a Box. We've talked about my Star Trek in a Box thing, of which I have two games like that, but then there's my other fandom of Tolkien, and oh, this is, this is Lord of the Rings in the Box. You are either going to be the goodly folk of Middle-earth, the hobbits, the men, dwarves, elves, or you're going to be creatures of Sauron and his minions and Saruman and all these evil things and bats and all this stuff, right? And it's it says two to four players, whatever. It's two player. Whatever. Don't listen to these people. Okay? Because <laughs> I think it would ruin it trying to split that up, honestly. So if you are the good player, you have the, the party, and they're going to head out. You've got the Fellowship, and they're going to try to go take the Ring to Mordor and destroy it. Meanwhile, some of the other party members are going to disperse, and they're going to go rally the troops and bring the troops out and kind of protect and distract the bad guys. Meanwhile, Sauron's out hunting for the Ring each round, and he's out there trying to destroy Middle-earth, just take over everything, because they win by uh, how many lands that they can conquer and take over, or destroying 
the, corrupting the, the corrupting the ring yeah. bearer. Yeah. Um, so you've got those. The good side can win by also getting a certain number of victory points, which is really hard to do militarily. Or they can go in and destroy the ring in the fires of Mount Doom through a long and crazy, very difficult journey, somehow avoiding all the hunts and everything else. It plays out very dramatically. And I think one of the reasons that this race to the top is we finally got a chance to play and Hunter got a bunch of the expansions. And it added so much meat to the game because we've always loved this story and played with it. But now we've got a bunch of the side characters. We've got the eagles and we've got bats and we've got Galadriel and and Elrond and... Treebeard and... Yes, and, and the, uh, the, the, the Witch King of Angmar. And you've got all these characters that are coming into play now and interacting with the game that we already really love. Yeah, there's a Balrog. I was <laughs> this close to bringing it out last game. And it's just, oh my goodness. It's amazing. And the balance is so good in this game. Every every single game has come down to the last draw. Yeah, and it really has been kind of that nail-biter. I'm not sure who's going to win until yeah. the last second. The bad guys are really geared up kind of like the the klingons are in the, the star trek games they are like war 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 they reproduce uh warriors like you would not believe they just keep coming the people in the good people in middle earth you know it, it always freaks me out playing them because once they die they're gone you don't get that constant regeneration that the bad guy has so you're really a lot more cautious about throwing yourself into battle meanwhile Sauron's just wailing on everybody and you're just trying to hold yourself afloat but you've got all this political maneuvering going on and you've got the party and somehow they're able to elude the ring and uh, the hunt I mean and they've got the ring and they sneak into Mordor and at the very last second every time it's always down to is Sauron gonna defeat that last city and take over Middle Earth before Frodo gets the ring in and it's just Amazing! It's just like rereading that book or watching the movies over again each time we play it. This is also a huge time investment, and as you can probably see, I mean, it is rewatching the movies because it takes as long <laughs> as one of the movies to play. The, Especially if you add all the expansions. Oh, yeah, with the expansions. That's really what does it. The map is ridiculously huge. There's two boards, if that tells you. It basically covers our table, our little table. Um... Is this Meeple Realty or is this yes, broken? Meeple okay, Re Meeple Realty again did a beautiful number on this. They etched everything here so they have the setup for you. So you don't have to go hunt in the rule book to say, okay, my shadow army takes this many people to set up. They list it for you. I mean, this is nuts. I love this. And then the good guys have the same thing where they're like, okay, in Isengard, put this and that. Um, see in here? The eagles. Oh, love these things. They're amazing. The pieces are fantastic. Uh, the dice are some of the most gorgeous dice in the game. I don't know if you can see those. I'm trying to put my hand as a backdrop. And there's some of the pieces, and you can see in here, here is one of the Nazgul. That's the... Or is this the Witch King? Yes. Oh, here's the Witch King. Look at that. Aren't these amazing? The pieces are fantastic. They're just fantastic. The hunt, everything... In the, this is another game that is... A pain to learn the first time because there's so much going on. But once you learn it, we have found that playing successive games, again, not unlike Viticulture, it's pretty intuitive how things go. So it's getting quicker and quicker for us to get back into the game. We still have to review the rules. There's just so much that you have to go over. But now, you know, we don't have to go over, oh, what do the cards do? Because we're like, okay, I can remember by reading a card. I remember what they're doing. I remember what we do to react to it. I remember what the dice symbols mean. This and that. You've got some cheat sheets that help you along too. So it makes the game a lot more smooth for playing. And with the expansions, you also have some of the characters add their own special dice to it. There's so much going on in this game. Oh, Smeagol plays an important role. He's actually part of the party, uh, depending on where you are in the game. It, which is so much more thematic, like following how the book goes which he was another expansion thing. There's just ugh, so much stuff going on in this. If you like Tolkien and you like heavier games, you should play this game. I'm not usually a war game fan either. And this is War of the Ring. Yes, there's a lot of battles in this game. It is a war game. And obviously it's my favorite. That's crazy. 
Because it doesn't feel like one of those where I'm like moving some chits around and trying to calculate all this stuff. This is the drama of Tolkien right here in a box. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome game. I cannot speak highly enough of it. And that's why it's my favorite game. Go ahead. Spout forth the glories of War of the Ring. I don't have to spout forth very much. You did a pretty good job. <laughs> this is my number one game of all time. So we have collided. I either We've either agreed or I've brainwashed her effectively enough <laughs> to make it her favorite game as well. No, I think what really, I think what knocked it above was the last time we played. We played with everything. Yes. We sat down and made expansion. a day of it. I mean, it was a, it was a long game. It was probably, what, five, five six hour game. Cause well, we, we had children because, interrupting too sometimes. Well, and, and, stuff, we had, and we had two new expansions to learn. To we learn, we yeah. went from base game to all, both expansions. Everything. And uh, it was an awesome game. Uh, it came down to the very last draw of the game. Who was going to win? Who was going to lose? Um, we had funny battle moments and things, too. That was... Elrond hiding in Rivendell. Rivendell got <laughs> taken over, but he, he was hiding. <laughs> and I usually play the good guys, but this time you were playing the good guys, and so I was in just mauling cities and stuff. But if your characters, your special characters, are by themselves, you can't really... The opposite player can't actually attack them. So, yeah, we joked about Elrond hiding in the bushes, but he was able to cast he used, spells. He used and... his ring and did stuff, and, uh, and, then, and then Gandalf he... came and <laughs> rescued him. <laughs> Gandalf comes with his army. I mean, it's it, this is one of those games that this is the stuff that stories are made of, right? You, you're going to relive plays of this and things that happened in it for quite a while. It's just amazing. The thought that went into this game to make it so thematic just blows my mind. I mean, obviously, the game designers and everyone who worked with this were huge fans of Tolkien. They did a magnificent job. And... I also, with the uh, Meeple Realty insert, if you want to invest, oh my goodness, they're amazing. They're beautiful. They they try to help you streamline playing the game, too, mm -hmm. not just with storage, but how to set it up. I mean, that, right. They didn't have to do that. That was something I'd never seen before, and I, I love that they did that. So, I mean, it's like we're promoting two companies here, because yeah. for real, this is, I, oh gosh, this is a great game, and that insert saved this game, too, for us, because it's really hard to invest that time to play the game when you also have to set up all the unique armies to the sides, and, okay, to set up the games, you put well, you two just, soldiers here, and two, you know. Well, and, that's part of it, but then also the bin is there. You just, you just take your bin and set it, and as you need yeah, to pull more armies with the off, new insert, you, you, just... you have that list, and then you've got your bins, and they're all pre-organized, ready to go. It's fantastic. So you, you mainly focus in on theme and... and gameplay and things like that but the I, I also like a lot of the mechanisms in this game one of my favorite mm. game mechanisms is multi-use cards yeah and this one is like when you look at the card it's like oh i want the it, basically you have a card that you can play it as like an action but you also have a card that you use for combat and you're like oh i want it for both of these which do i you do it, it's really it's, horrible. It's, re it's really a, a and you have a hand size limit yeah. too so sometimes you have to make that that sad, sad decision to discard something. You're like, oh. Yeah, it's... it's oh, I'm going to This game is awesome. Every, every every single game has been literally epic. Yeah, it really has. <laughs> it really has been epic. It hasn't been, it hasn't been a game where it's like, oh, you've got it made. There's no problem. You know, you're running away with it. Every game... That, whoever designed this game... Whoever designed it. Ares? Or, no, you mean the designer. Yeah. Uh, uh, a, a montage of people. They took the time to really balance this game. This game is Ooh, extremely balanced. Extremely balanced. Roberto Di Meglio, Marco Maggi, and Francesco ne Nepatello. Awesome. You guys rock. Yeah, the balance in this game is off the charts. Yep. So there you have it. That is my number one game all the time. All the time. Well, you made the combine list kind of anti-climatic now. Well, way to spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, okay, they know that one, but if you look at everything else, especially when you go back through the Hunter list, Hunter's always like, hmm, hmm, because our list, until you get really to our top, even our top ten, really, we have quite a variety of different tastes yeah, just in our to... board games now. We've diverged a little bit. Our super favorite games always seem to kind of all, you know, be the same. But when it's other games, that just like to 
throw down casually, we really go off in different directions. And so I am curious to see when we do our weighted list where things actually land. It's going to be very Yeah, just taking a rough estimate, there's about 40, 45 games that are in my top 100 that, that are not in your top 100. Yeah, because he was teasing me about that. Just a, kind of a little teaser for you guys for our next uh, video we're going to make. The As he's going through the list, he'd be like, well, what did you think about this? And I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's my 138. And he's like, what? No. Right. So, yeah, there's games that, yeah, I like them. They're just, they didn't quite make my top 100 for different reasons. A lot of times it had to do with dice. So the next two, the next two videos. Well, that first off, thanks for watching. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Um, but the next two videos in this series, the next one's gonna be her after party. It's gonna be live. She likes to do channel stats and things like that, and I can give her grief on why certain games aren't on her list. It'll be fun. That sort of thing. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna talk about my 101 through 182. All of them. Eh, we'll see. <laughs> okay. And then the vi the week after that, we're doing a combined list. That'll be the combo weighted list. Uh, basically, we about. take I take her list and my list, and we merge it, and we get the definitive Rebecca and Hunter top one hundred. <laughs> That's gonna be exciting. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm we're, really curious. And we're gonna do it. We're gonna just we're just I think in the way we're gonna do it, we're just gonna just scroll the games up, and we're just gonna talk about them as they scroll up, and we're just gonna try to keep up with the scroll. There you go. So. That's the, the plan. We'll see Challenge how. Challenge accepted. We'll see if that'll work. I don't yes. know. I got to try to see. We if I may, can we, out may how to... we may tweak it between now and then. But you get a chance to see that, and now you know you've seen both of our top 100s. Get an idea. Hopefully, you've seen a bunch of games that maybe you haven't tried, but you we gave you at least a taste of it. You say, oh, I may want to go explore that and try that and play that. I mean, that's the goal here. I hope that you find something that you liked too and want to try that out. These are the games that hit, and I hope you kind of have an idea why we like them now, especially the ones that we had some crossover with. Because, especially in my case, I really, really like a huge variety of games. And so hopefully somewhere in there, depending on what you like, if you play with kids, if you don't, you play with couples, you play party games, there's something probably on my list. And hopefully it's something new that you can give it a shot. So... Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you soon with some after-party action.